The assassin had had his day. Very true. He'd kidnapped Triss Marigold. It seemed like Fultis's life had not been enough. It seemed like the killer also wanted the monarch's former advisor. There was no time to think. It was time to act. Grabbing Geralt, I embarked on a voyage upriver, deeper into the Pontar Valley. There, in a region known as Lormark, King Henselt of Kedwin had made camp with his army. King is the key word here, denoting the central figure in my plan to capture the Kingslayer. The special forces of King made the soil light lightly upon him. Fultist had lost some of their customary enthusiasm, treating us to not one single joke of the how many ways can you skin an elf variety. Which only goes to support my theory that the human mind is capable of producing a finite amount of horror before some manner of reflection springs itself upon it. been a massacre! Bones everywhere! How in the world did Cleversig harness so much of the power? Do you always get so excited at the sight of skulls, Death Mold? <sighs> Scoff all you want, I speak of magic! The kind of spells that win wars, thousands incinerated in seconds! <laughs> power, destruction, annihilation! Yes, after which Sabrina Cleversig was burned at the stake. And the Pontar Valley remains within Edern's borders. Edern is a carcass. Still showing life signs, but the realm's days are numbered. No peasant revolt can change that. You're wrong, Deathmold. This country lives. I can feel it. Like an old wounded bear covered in scars, hounds all round it, but still strong. Still deadly. This good war. But Sire, the Madonian barons won't dare stand against you. You should see that shortly. I've prepared everything. Sire! Long live the king! Baron Fellat has forever hinted Long that he would gladly change his Chadwen, all wheels and forever! Scum. The other nobles are panic-stricken at the very thought of Saskia with her peasant and non-human rebels. They are unprepared to fight and know it very well. And Demovan's cob? Has he named his price? Prince Stennis has yet to respond, but Fellat has assured him. I must see him. Look into his eyes. I'll know what he's made of then. We most humbly greet His Majesty Henselt, King of Kedwin, heir to the dynasty of the Unicorn, Lord of Ard Kareg, Archduke of Barnard, and Vanquisher of Nilfgaard. Welcome to Edern. How much do you want? Your Majesty surely jests. I couldn't be more serious. How much for your signatures? A hundred thousand Novigrad crowns, we thought, to each of us, and the titles of Marquis. Ooh. We speak of Upper Eden, of coal and silver mines, numerous factories, the sole white marble quarry this side of the Yoruga, and the North's main east-west trade route. We speak of Lawmark. I advise you to adopt the new nomenclature. In exchange, we shall swear fealty and acknowledge your majesty as sovereign of these lands. You'll receive 50,000 apiece and no additional titles. Also, you'll provide guides and supplies to my army. My men will install themselves in your castles. Your armed men will gather under Sorcerer Deathbolt's command and will set out to quell the peasant rebellion. Sire, the common folk will hate they simply won't understand. Yes, Fellat, they will hate you, but at least this way you'll live. Comfortably, I might add. 
Refuse and die by my hand or that of Saskia the Dragon Slayer. Sire, we accept your conditions. Deathmold, the scroll. Sire, there is yet the matter of Prince Stennis and his rights to these lands. So long as he lives, <clears throat> so long as the Prince lives, he'll force his claims. Then kill him, Philot. <laughs> Sire, I'm no warrior. In that case, shut up and sign. Sawyer, the Dragon Slayer approaches, white flag in hand. Excellent. Let her pass. What are you waiting for? Pick up those quills and sign. Just out of curiosity, what does Upper Eden sell for these days? Fifty thousand. How much would you have demanded, lass? King, command your vulture to shut his beak before I thrust his cockerel up his arse and twist so hard he'll crow until noon reverts to morning. I... Sire, you must have her restrained. Oh, will you bully me as well? Anything to save Eden, King. A whore after all. Shut up, Deathmold. I've rather taken a liking to this Saskia. Say your peace, woman. King, withdraw your army, recognize Upper Eden's sovereignty and your persecution of non-humans and give them leave to quit your realm. Do this and save yourself and your army. <laughs> you have balls, woman, but what would I gain? My soldiers would call me a coward. I am Henselt of Ard Kareg. I'll not run from a woman, even if she be a dragon slayer. I see one other solution. You and I, King, here and now, before these folk and the gods, I challenge you. As in the old days, when the Honourable ruled this world, Upper Eden, to the victor! The lass has gone mad to challenge a king. Sire, this is absurd. We shall crush them in battle. They say the lass has slain a dragon. She could be dangerous. Precisely why she makes a worthy foe. Don't disappoint me, Dragon Slayer. Please show me how it's done. Begin! Facing one another in a chivalrous duel shall be Henselt of Ard Caray, King of Kedwin. So eager to do battle, King. In the name of Kreeb, Freyr, and Militele!
Hey, halt! What's with you, Zivik? Booze made your batty. Don't you recognize me? I'll be ploughed and damned. Why the hell did you bring him here, Roach? He's a witcher. I know who the horseman is. Ploughing Kingslayer at the gate of a king's camp? Why, he's not even bound. Easy, lads. The witcher's no murderer. I'll vouch for that. As for kings, well, I desperately need to see yours. You're in for a wait then, Mr. Special Mission Knight. Don't move, mutant! One of you go get the sergeant, and while you're at it, fetch a solid piece of rope to bind the freak. Come on, Zivig, no need for that. Where'd you say the king was? Out in the field somewhere, negotiating. Hey, Kingslayer, drop your weapons, or do I need to pack a bolt up your ass? Don't move! Don't even twitch, mutant! Hands where I can see him! Shoot! Smash ha. the freak! What the fuck? Soldiers! It's Sabina's class!
the sun go? It's an eclipse. Somebody cast a curse. Spectres are only susceptible to so many spells. Save us. We'll try to disperse the fog. Dennis? He lives? No, the wraiths have taken him. Dissipated. We're near its end.
You stink. Death Mold, Sheeler, meet me in my tent. You're to explain what the hell happened there, and how we're to get rid of it. As you command, Your Majesty. I'll tolerate no delays on this matter, and summon all my company commanders. Immediately, Your Majesty. Corporal, I'd like you to watch the Witcher closely. He just pulled me from a magic hell, so I doubt he wants my head as he took fall tests. But I'll not have him wandering round the camp like some stray dog. Occupy him for a time, then bring him to my tent. Sire, I must request an audience. Later. I'll see my mages first, then the Witcher. Ah, just lovely. And here I'd hope for a calm little war. Nowhere I might wet my throat around here. Roach, willing to vouch for this overgrown urchin? He did not kill Foltest or Demavend, if that's what you're asking. You've got my assurance on that. Good enough for me. Let's go, then! Let's go! We don't have all day! Yes? Take me to the king. I've seen enough military camps in my day. That I cannot, Witcher. I'm to keep an eye on you, the king's orders. Really want to babysit me? You're right. Let's go. How's it going, lads? I can't feel me plowing feet from all this standing around. Any chance you'll be sending up some replacements? In an hour. Open up the gate. The king wants to see the Witcher. Ah, uh, yeah. Go straight to the royal tent. You can't miss it. I've a few things to take care of. Godspeed, Zivik. I'll be near the main gate if you need me. So long. Ha! A Witcher! The king must have summoned him to fight the wraith. You think? I'm certain. Ha. Hmm. I know that face. Nearly everyone hunts you, yet you live in spite of that. Impressive. I find it hard to wean myself off life. As do we all. However, in all my career as an ambassador of His Imperial Majesty, I have never met anyone quite as talented at surviving as you. I took the liberty of checking some rumors about you. I'll say it again. Impressive. Are you seeking employment? I was unaware you fellows hired yourselves out for battle. My aim here is different. Really? Perhaps I can be of assistance.
I saw you with Foltest before. Now you're with Henselt. No doubt you'll visit the King of Redania next. I need not go far. Radovid is en route to Loch Muin. Perhaps he has already arrived. We'll meet there. Loch Muin? An ancient elven city quite a ways away, near the source of the Pontar. Why there? The mages wish to re-establish their council. They sent out invitations to all the kings. Foltest was a good king. Shame he ended that way. I've already conveyed the Emperor's condolences to Constable Matavis. Since we're talking about Temeria and Foltest, apparently the fallen king's advisor, the sorceress Triss Merigold, has disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Rumors abound. Do you know anything about her? Why do you ask, Excellency? I heard the two of you are... close. Mages have a natural tendency to disappear into thin air once in a while. Why is anyone concerned? Maybe they wonder if witches locked in dungeons possess the same capacity. You're avoiding the subject, which means it's uncomfortable for you. Have it your way, I shan't press. But I'll ask one more question, if I may. Of course, Your Excellency. I mentioned Triss because, I must admit, I am perturbed. Mages are known for their mutual envy and rivalry. I wonder if there's any matter that could unite them. Perhaps you could be a bit clearer, Excellency. Then I shall ask directly. Do you know anything about Merigold's involvement with an organization of sorceresses? Assuming, of course, that you are, theoretically, or have been, close. I'm a witcher. I rarely theorize. Killing monsters is purely practical. I don't doubt it. You know, sometimes a single understatement can speak more than a thousand words. So, I thank you for your silence, witcher. Do you have other questions? Why are you so interested in this organization of sorceresses? I wonder about some strange coincidences. I'm told several of them were seen in the vicinity when the assassination attempts occurred. What's so suspicious about that? Mages have always thronged around monarchs, the source of power and coin. I'm not accusing anyone. I merely said it makes me wonder. What's the Emperor's envoy doing here? Satisfy my curiosity. The last unfortunate conflict left the Northern Kingdoms in pitiful economic condition. His Imperial Majesty desires stability. We wish to offer financial assistance, so I'm visiting those lands hardest hit by the war. Henselt is coping admirably as far as I can see. The details of my visit here are reserved for the Emperor and the Kedweni King. I need to know everything. <laughs> Magic will not help you. I'm very well protected against such attempts. I saw you with full test before. Now you I lock the ma Come in, Witcher. I wish you to feel at ease as this is an unofficial audience. You help me in the mist, thus I surmise you do not seek my death. Which leads me to ask what you do seek here, Geralt of Rivia. Peace and quiet, sire. I need to clear my name. Though I tend not to meddle in politics, this time I believe I have no choice. Hmm. You must answer quickly and unequivocally. You must be clear, Witcher. I'm in no mood for excuses hiding behind professional codes and trade secrets. Did you kill Foltest? No. Do you know who did? A Witcher named Letho. Do you know each other? No. I was told you lost your memory. How can you know? I can only say what I know to be certain. You wanted clarity, sire. De Tarsaville claims this Letho is in the area. Is that true? Yes. What does he want here? My head? He's hiding from Jorvith and his Skoyatel. 
I don't know his plans. And you aim to get him? I do. Last question. Do you know who had Foltest and Demabend assassinated? Who's behind the Kingslayers? I don't know, but I'll find out when I find Letho. My spies have confirmed your words. I suppose I must believe you. Now to the other matter. The mist, the wraiths, all that magic shit holding up my campaign. My mages, as usual, have proved useless. They blather on about higher magic, delayed curses, and other hogwash, but nothing comes of it. This matter must be settled with a sword. A witcher's sword. Will you manage this task? I'm willing to try. Excellent! Lift the curse, and you'll learn the meaning of royal generosity. And even should you fail to catch this letho, I shall help you clear your name. Consider Deathmold at your disposal. He'll give you all the necessary information. Also, you are free to move about the camp and its environs from now on. Now, leave me alone. As we forged our way through the fog, you claimed it was Glevisig's curse. Sabrina Glevisig's. She was a sorceress, my former advisor. I ordered her bound to a wagon wheel and burned alive. While dying, she cursed me and my lineage. That was three years ago. The curse was cast three years ago. Any sign it's been active in the interim? Is that important? Sire, we're not talking about a fortune told in a tent on market day, nor about some curse cast by a novice mage. This curse caused a solar eclipse and summoned hordes of specters. We're dealing with a complex spell that operates at several levels. Uncommon knowledge and skill were required to cast it. Lifting it will be even more difficult. If I'm going to deal with it, I need you to cooperate. Ah, the plague. So be it. Sire, do you remember the curse itself? What exactly did Sabrina say? All she said at the time has been fulfilled to some degree. A star adorned with a bloody braid will cut across the heavens. Square coins from maritime depths will beguile the hearts of fools. Coins? Deathmold found a few such coins among soldiers accused of treason. What did you condemn Sabrina for, sire? One year after the Peace of Sintra, I fought Demerven for Lormark. General Vandergrift commanded a part of my force. He forded the Pontar and joined battle on this field. It raged until evening, when Sabrina Glevesig decided to take matters into her own hands. Fireballs rained down onto the battlefield. Three thousand men turned to bloody charred meat scraps. The fire consumed Kedwenis and Adernians alike. Knights boiled alive in their armor. Mad beasts howling with pain. War is for the honorable. When the likes of Glevesig enter the fray, it turns into hell.